hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel this is the real life stories youtube channel i'm so glad you stopped uh by to um spend some time with me um i'm, I'm your joyful storyteller and on this channel i share content about just stories human stories human experiences human joys human pains human just human stories this is what this channel is about and the purpose of sharing these stories is so that we can learn so that we can gain knowledge so that we can um, grow so that we can you know you know hear a different perspective and so that we can be blessed so um today I wanted to share the share the real life story my real life story of going to boarding school I went to boarding school in Nigeria. Um, you know, in one of my previous videos, I shared my real life story. And after watching it back, I realized that I completely did not, I didn't even mention that I went to boarding school. And I was thinking about it. I was like, wait a minute, why didn't I talk about, why didn't I mention the fact that I went to boarding school in Nigeria and Lagos? And I think subconsciously, that phase of my life, that time of my life is a time that I don't like to think about. It's a time that I like to delete from my life, delete from my memory, delete from my existence because that was a very tough and difficult time in my life. And um, I don't know if you even think I remember what year I went. In, I was in boarding school. It was definitely in the 90s going into the two the early 2000s yes that was the time period of six years yes it's one to ss3 um six years so um i went into boarding school by the time i started it was just me i was the only sibling in my family that um was in boarding school at the beginning um i, think, I believe i was the first one in my family to go to boarding school actually and I know I have audiences from people from all over the world watching this video in Nigeria Particularly when I grew up in Nigeria. It was it's fairly common for parents to send their kids into boarding school um, It's fairly common. You know, I think people had the belief that when you go to boarding school You know, you're gonna you're gonna learn life skills and it's gonna make you tougher and it's gonna make you stronger And you're gonna learn how to do so much and you're gonna you know, it's just gonna help to develop you all around that was the idea. But one thing I'm realizing, and I know that um, for people who wa follow Nigerian content, you know that we hear all these stories about children going to school or going to boarding school and they get hurt. Uh, some of them lose their lives. So my concern, I would never send my children to boarding school, in Nigeria at least. And... Um, if things are still the same that you know that they were the way the way they were when I went to boarding school, and the the reason is that um, you know we have you know there were there was hundreds and I probably thousands of us in that school, and we just didn't have the adequate um, care that each child would need. You know there wasn't adequate adequate care per child. And, you know, with that kind of setting, massive amount of children, not enough individualized care, um, there's bound to be errors. There's bound to be children that will fall through the cracks and that would suffer and that would suffer emotionally. And with the way the school system works, um, at least worked when I was in school there, um, you know, we're not, and even the society, we're not really taught how to express our emotions. We're not really taught how to use our words to describe how we're feeling. We don't even have the words to use. So if a child is suffering, if a child is hurting, if something is wrong, if a child is being neglected emotionally, um, that particular child may not be able to express themselves and the damage, um, you know, may be ongoing. Some of the things that, that I saw, and that I experienced when I was in boarding school those years ago. And some people swear by boarding school. They love it. They they, 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 they they will say that they had a great experience. And that, you know, it's the best thing that could have happened to them. And that they would also send their kids there. And, you know, everybody has to do what they think is best for them. But for me, number one issue. The, um, the violence at the time that I went. You know, senior students were allowed to... Um, 
to punish, you know, to beat um, younger students. You know, you are allowed to do that. You know, you are allowed to prove a level of seniority. You know, seniority back then just mean that, meant that you had rights, just rights to do practically anything. To people that were younger than you, to the people that were coming behind you, that is what seniority meant um, in the boarding school, and I think it's really damaging. It's really emotionally damaging to people. Uh, um, mind you, we're all kids. Everyone in the school is a minor. Every every student is a minor, right? So why should a minor have such power to be able to do something, to be able to bully, to be able to bully, you know, somebody else who's also a child? You know, so students had that kind of power um, to, to bully um, other students and to maltreat other students and to um, phys you know, physically assault other students and to, you could ask an another student to go fetch your water because, you know, the, uh, there's a res reservoir or a place where we have to go get water that we need. And another problem, many times we don't have running water um, in the uh, dorms. We don't have what we need. We don't have the proper facilities. And you know the environment ends up being inhumane. It's not. It's not. It's not fit for human uh, uh, consumption, if you will. And so you know where we fetch water is further out from where we live. And so you, you know people would send. I'm pretty sure I did it too, right? But I'm just looking back, maybe 30 years, you know, back, and I'm wondering um, about what kind of life was that. <laughs> What kind of what, what what were we thinking? What was I thinking? What were we thinking? I was a child, but I'm looking back. Other people, you know, you have to go fetch their water. Um, you know, if a senior student, you know, somebody who's in a class above your class, high, higher than your class, uh, sends you on an errand. Remember, sometimes some seniors would send me on errands, and you know, to do something for them or to wash their clothes. You could do that, or um, what else? To wash clothes. Um, buy things for them at the store um, and I think at one time I had misplaced something that a senior student that had asked me to um, to wash as a matter of fact I think I washed it I spread it out on the line but then when I got back there it was gone because there was a lot of stealing happening too um, and so that senior student physically <laughs> took care of me you know I'm, I'm trying not to use those words you know um, too many of them so people are allowed to bully people and to you know, physically um, hit them. So that happened to me several times. Sometimes if a senior student was displeased with what you were doing, um, they could punish you. Like I said, you could be on your knees in the sun, uh, putting and ask you to put your hands up. Um, so many different punishment styles that, that we had. That, and that wasn't only coming from senior students, that was coming from teachers. Sometimes if a teacher had a problem with you, perhaps maybe there's noise in the class. And because we don't, we don't, we're not um, encouraged to use humane and acceptable practices, most people want to go straight to, to the caning of students, meaning um, hitting the students with, um, with canes. And if one person did something wrong, they can decide to do that to the whole class. And um, or the whole class has to go outside in the sun and be on their knees for hours and hours and hours. These types of things, some you know, every every child is different. Some children can, um, you know, just roll with it, and you know, they're resilient. And Nigerians are over resilient. You know, we we just recover. We can we can bear a lot of things. But for some people, that environment could, could cause them to snap could cause them to mentally snap and lose it, you know? So that those conditions are too harsh, too harsh. Um, sometimes in the boarding school, the parents have paid, obviously for you to be in the boarding school, your parents have paid for you to be there. But sometimes the food is not enough. You go, it's, it's breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time. You, you could show up for these meals and they tell you that, oh, the food is not enough. It's not, you know, it's, we're out of food, we're out of food. How are you going to have children, children, age 10, year, 10, 10 years to maybe age 16? And then they're time to eat and you say that you're out of food. What are they supposed to eat? Somebody tell me. So I, I, I think, you know, I don't know if this is how all boarding schools ran at the time or how they still operate right now. But when it comes to 
child advocacy, child protection, for crying out loud. We can do better. We can do better. You know, the way the schools are set up, you know, the story of, um, what is her name? Um, the young lady that just lost her life to, uh, uh, through um, electrocution. Uh, I don't want to say the wrong name, but I think if you know her name, please drop it in the comment section. And, you know, like we watched the mother weeping and the, the, the story told was that, you know, the, the girl went to a cutting candy machine during a school event and some wire was loose and she, she was, you know, she was electrocuted and she lost her life. Um, so not putting enough, you know, and then after she lost her, her life. People were pouring water on her. There was no CPR. There was no um, first aid. There was no uh, first responders. There was nothing, nothing in place. Uh, many, many times, speaking of uh, nothing in place, when you're sick and you go to the sick bay, it's called, or the, the clinic in the school, and I'm losing daylight. <laughs> it's getting darker. But you go to the um, sick bay, and there's no medical supplies. You know, there's nothing. There's nurses there or medical staff members there, but there's no supplies. You have a school with thousands and thousands and there should be basic first aid um, stuff even available in the dorms, even without, before you get to the sick bay, right? And when you get to the sick bay, there should be a, a high quality level of medical attention, life-saving, um, you know, medical supplies should be available, but these things are not available. So when I think back and I'm like, oh my God, how? And people send their kids there every year, every year, every year. So please tell me if you if you went to boarding school or if you're in boarding school right now, tell me about your experience in the comment section. How was it for you? For me, it was traumatic. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I met some good people, good friends, you know, good people that we did life together for six years. I was in Red House, Model College Mirror. You know, say hi to me in the comment section if you've been to that school in Lagos. If you went to boarding school, if you had a good experience, share your good experience in the comment section. For me, I now that I'm an adult and I can I can speak for myself, it's a no-go. It's a no no. No, 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 no. It was too harsh, it was too rough, it was too violent, it was too messy for me. For for for, for me, honestly speaking. So share your experience, uh your real life story about being in boarding school. Did you like it? Do you love it? Would you send your kids there? Are your kids currently going there? For me, it's a no. Uh, thanks for watching this uh channel. Um, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe, subscribe, share, share all your thoughts, what you feel about your body school experience, share it in the comment section, uh, like this video, uh, share it with someone and I will catch you on my next video. Take care. Have a good one.